Hey guys, we're in Psalm 119, we're in 163, and it is exciting to read this. I hate and despise falsehood, says this writer. I hate and despise falsehood, but I love your law. Boy, what a contrast. And this writer is saying, God, I believe in moral absolutes. I'm believing in your promises and your word. I believe there to be a God who is singular, who's right and wise and holy and beautiful beyond description. And I'm certain that the psalmist hated falsehood in every sense of the word, and particularly probably in his own life. And so his then cure or remedy for that was loving the, his God's laws, going toward the word of God. You know, recently at our church, we've been doing some uh, much needed uh, remodeling and, and improvements and refreshing the environment. Just make it nicer, you know. And everything needs to be level. You know, everything that is put in, the, 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 the tiles and the bathroom walls, the, the, the materials that we put up on the wall have to be level. And uh, uh, otherwise, it, you know, it's cockeyed. I, I think about you know, if you built a house and you, you, it's like the leaning tower of Pisa, it's tilting, you know, and it's not cool. And it puts pressure on the whole structure. Uh, it's famous and people go see it because it's just so weird. But um, in film, they'll make things cockeyed. There's a, there's a shot that the filmmakers, the directors use that to show the audience uh, there's something that isn't right. There's something that's skewed. There's something that's off here. This writer hates that stuff that's off. And he's saying, I, I, I want that which is true. And I, and I know where to get it. And it's my love for the word. And as we go to it, as we study it, it's trustworthy because it's truth. And I want to read something from prayer of Jesus in his last week of his life on earth. Uh, it's been called his priestly prayer, the high priest's prayer. And it says in verse 17 of chapter 17 of John, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. So this is a help to us to uh, identify falsehood, even when it's coming into our own lives. You know, there's such a barrage of information right now. I mean, even false doctrine and uh, all kinds of conjecture, all kinds of opinions. You know, you could go on the internet and you can listen to people who are extremely articulate. They have, uh, you know, really uh, clear reading voices. They do good with their grammar. But sometimes what they're putting forth is conjecture or fabrication or their own opinion or bias or worse yet, lies. And um, this Bible tells us how to discern between uh, truth and error. And uh, one verse says that it's a plumb line. I think it's, uh, I think either in Zechariah or Nehemiah somewhere, but it talks about with Zerubbabel, there was a plumb line in the hand of, of Zerubbabel. And a plumb line is uses gravity, the gravitational pull with a weight on the end of a string to make sure things are at a 90 degree angle. Um, and so this is for the lovers of truth, very helpful, very clarifying. In fact, Psalm 119, and I'll finish with this. It starts with this. It says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. How can a carpenter make sure the house is level? By going with the plumb line and the, the bubble level and making sure, and that now they use lasers. And I just want to tell you, this is sure and true. And that's why the psalmist is saying, God, I love your law. Keep with it. Moms and dads, keep with it. Boys and girls, keep with it. Kids, teenagers, it will stabilize you through the crazy stuff we see in the world around us. God bless you.